Good morning, students. How are you all? Hope you are studying at home. So you are going to write your unit test two. Now let us see the question pattern and we will revise. So you are going to write your uh, test for twenty five marks. Okay. The first one. Read the passage and answer the questions given below. So the first one is read the passage and answer the questions given below. So you will be given three questions. How many questions? Three questions for the. Uh, you have to write for three marks. Okay. The second one is the hints development. Second one is hints development. So hints development also contains three marks. Okay. There will be one hints development. It contains three marks. And the third one is identifying nouns. Okay. Identifying nouns. So there will be six nouns. And each noun carries half marks and totally three marks. Okay, there will be six nouns. Each carries half mark and totally three marks. So the fourth one is the identify the types of sentences. Identify the types of sentences. So there will be four sentences. How many sentences? Four sentences. Each carries half mark and totally two mark. Rewrite an interrogative sentence into assertive sentence. So the fifth Roman letter is rewriting interrogative sentence into assertive sentence. So there will be five interrogative sentences. Okay, how many sentences? There will be five interrogative sentences, and each carries one mark and totally five marks. And the sixth one is the synonyms. Sixth one is the synonyms. There will be three synonyms. Each carries half mark and totally one and half mark. And the seventh one is the antonyms. Okay, seventh one is the antonyms. So in this antonyms also there will be three questions. How many questions? Three questions. Each carries half mark and totally one and half mark. And the eighth one is the past tense. Okay, so the past tense is also three questions. Okay, there will be three questions in past tense. Each carries half mark and totally one and half marks. And the ninth one is reference to the context. Reference to the context. So in this also there will be Three questions, and each question carries half mark and totally one and half marks. And the last one is the question and answer. Okay, question and answer. So there will be two questions. There will be two questions. Each question carries one and half marks and totally three marks. So this is the question pattern for your unit test, and it carries twenty-five marks. So now let us discuss one by one. The first one. Read the passage and answer the questions given below. Okay, read the passage and answer the questions given below. So you have already written in your previous exam. So a passage will be given for you. Okay. So what you have to do? You have to read the passage carefully. You have to understand the meaning what is given in the passage. So you have to read it two times. Okay. So after understanding the passage, you have to move on to the questions. So below the passage there will be questions given. How many questions? There will be three questions given, and each question carries one mark. So after reading the question, you have to find the answer from the given passage. You have to find the suitable answer and write them. Okay. Second one is the hints development. What hints development? So hints develop, uh, development is nothing but a story will be given for you. Okay, a story will be given for you, but the story will be given as a hint. Okay, the story will be given as a hint. You have to frame your own story by using those hints. Okay, what you have to do? You have to frame the story by using the hints, and you also have to give a suitable title. Okay, you have to give a suitable title. First, you have to read the given hints. After uh, uh, understanding the hints, you have to frame a story by using those hints, and you have to give a suitable title. For the, um, it carries three marks. Okay, for hints development, it carries three marks. The third one, identifying nouns. Now, let us see what is noun. It is the name of the person, place. Thing or the animal. So we have already seen what is meant by noun in the previous class. So what is meant by noun? It is the name of the person. So uh, noun is nothing but it is the naming word. Uh, it is the name of the person, place, thing or the animal. Example: 
the ball is played in the playground with the ball okay so this is the example for now the ball is playing in the playground with a ball so uh, how many nouns are there in the sentence see here the boy and then playground a ball so the boy is the name of the person okay he it refers to he so it is the name of the person and the playground so this playground are refers to the place okay it is the name of the place and a ball okay so this ball is the name of a thing okay it's the name of the thing so it is called as the noun so like this uh, you will be given sentences in your test so for a single sentence uh, there will be two or more than three nouns you have to identify and write those nouns so noun is nothing but it is the name of the person place thing or the animal example the boy is playing in the playground with the ball so the nouns are the boy playground a ball look at your person ram sheila he she like that okay person i have given example for the persons right ram sheila he she so this includes the name of a person so he and she indicates uh, the person okay for place temple school chennai so these words are uh, indicates the place and things ball table chair so these words indicates the thing okay shall we read from first noun is nothing but it is the name of the person place thing or the animal example the boy is playing in the playground with a ball so the noun in the sentences are the boy playground ball so the example for person is ram sheila he she place so the example for place is temple school chennai etc likewise the example for thing is ball table chair etc okay next we are going to see identifying the types of sentences okay identifying the types of sentences so there will be four questions each question carries half marks and totally two marks so how many types of sentences are there we have already seen there are four types of sentences but we have seen in detail only two the assertive sentence and the interrogative sentence okay so first we are going to see about assertive sentence what is meant by assertive sentence it states something the sentence ends with full stop assertive sentence is nothing but uh, it will state something okay it says about uh, somebody or something okay the sentence ends with full stop so in assertive sentence the uh, sentence will, will always ends with the full stop example she is playing okay she is playing so something has been stated in this uh, sentence by a girl okay something has been stated in the sentence by a girl and the sentence ends with a full stop the sentence ends with a full stop so it is known as the assertive sentence look at the next example i like to read books i like to read books so in the sentence something has been stated by the books okay something has been stated by the books and the sentence ends with a full stop so it is known as the assertive sentence so assertive sentence means it states something the sentence ends with full stop example she is playing i like to read books so the both the sentences ends with full stop next one is the interrogative sentences the interrogative sentences starts with wh word like when where who why it ends with question marks it also answers to yes or no type so what is meant by interrogative sentences the interrogative sentence and it starts with the wh word so what is meant by wh word the word which starts with the wh letter like what see look at here when so uh, in this word it start the word starts with the wh letter okay the word starts with the wh letter when where who why it ends with the question mark so in interrogative sentence the sentence always ends with the question mark it also answers to yes or no type so 
this uh, interrogative sentence will also answer to S or no type. What is my S or no type? The sentence will start with the WH uh, word. Okay, for example, see here. Do you have your breakfast? Do you have your breakfast? So in the sentence, uh, uh, it doesn't start with the WH word, but it answers to the uh, question uh, like S yes or no. Okay. So do you have your breakfast? Well, so what would be the answer? The answer would be either yes or no. So this is known as the yes or no type. Look at the second example. Are you happy? So in this sentence also, uh, the sentence doesn't begin with the double H word, but it answers to yes or no. Are you happy? So in this also we can able to answer only either yes or no. Okay. Next, why are you late? See. Uh, the sentence has been uh, ends with the question mark. Okay, the sentence has ended with the question mark, and it has uh, also started with the double H word why. And the last one is when do you come? So in the sentence also, uh, it has been started with the double H word, and the sentence ends with the question mark. So it is known as the interrogative sentence. So shall we read from first? Interrogative sentence means interrogative sentence starts from the double H word like when, where. Who, why? It ends with question mark. It also answers to yes or no type. Example: Do you have your breakfast? Are you happy? Why are you late? When do you come? Shall we read from first? Noun. Noun is the name of the person, place, thing, or the animal. Example. The boy is playing in the playground with a ball. So, likewise, you will be given sentence. You have to identify the noun in the given sentences. So, the example for a person is Ram, Sheila, he, she, etc. So, the example for place is temple, school, Chennai, etc. So, the example for thing is ball, table, chair, and etc. Next, the type of sentences. In the uh, types of sentences, we have seen only two types: the assertive type and the interrogative type. So, the assertive sentences it states something. The sentence ends with full stop. Example: She is playing. I like to read books. So, the both the sentence has been stated by something, and it has been ends with a full stop. So, interrogative sentence means the interrogative sentence starts with W H word like. When, where, who, why. So these are all the question words. Okay. When, where, why, who. The word which starts with the W H uh, is known as the question words. It ends with the question mark. It also answers to yes or no type. Example: Do you have your breakfast or you happy? So the uh, both uh, these sentences are known as yes or no type. Uh, next, uh, why are you late? When do you come? So all these sentences ends with the question mark. So it is known as the interrogative sentence. Okay, students. Next, we are going to uh, see about rewriting interrogative into assertive sentence. So how to rewrite the interrogative sentence into assertive sentence? So just now we have seen what is meant by assertive sentence and what is meant by interrogative sentence. Will you come tomorrow? Okay. Will you come tomorrow? So, what type of sentence is this? Very good. So, it is the interrogative sentence because the sentence ends with the question mark. So, we are going to rewrite this interrogative sentence into assertive sentence. While uh, changing the interrogative into assertive sentence, we have to start with the subject. Okay? We have to start with the subject. So, what is the subject in the sentence? Can you able to identify? Yeah, the you okay you is the subject in the sentence so i have written it first next after the subject you have to write the verb or the auxiliary or sorry verb or the modern verbs okay so what is my modern verb will shall can would would so these words are called as the modern verbs so after the subject you i have written will okay will next the main verb so come is the main verb in the sentence so you will come tomorrow okay this will you come tomorrow the interrogative sentences has been changed into assertive sentence as you will come tomorrow and what we will uh, do at last in assertive sentence we will keep a full stop okay so i have kept a full stop at last 
So you have to write the subject and after the subject you have to write the verb or body model verb and after to the model verb you have to write the main verb. Okay? So we come tomorrow as the main verb in this sentence. We will come tomorrow, you will come tomorrow. So the second sentence. Shall you take this? Shall you take this? So this is the interrogative sentences because the uh, sentence ends with the question marks. So now I have changed the interrogative sentence into assertive sentence. What we have to do first? We have to write the subject first. So what is the subject in the sentence? Very good. The subject is you. Next we have to write the model verb. So the, the model verb is shall. You shall. The main verb. Take this. Okay. So after writing subject, we have to write the verb body model verb. So after writing this, we have to write the main verb. So you shall take this. So in subjective sentence, we have to end with a full stop. Shall you take this? This is the interrogative sentence and we have written the interrogative sentences as assertive sentence. You shall take this. The third one. Would you like to go to the movie? Would you like to go to the movie? So this is the interrogative sentence. So you have to identify by uh, the question mark. Okay. So this uh, has been changed into assertive. So what is the subject here? Yeah. You. You is the subject in the sentence and you is the Modern verb. So after that you have to write the main verb. Like to go to the movie. So this is the main verb in this sentence. So this has been changed into you would like to go to the movie. And sentence ends with full stop because we have changed it into a certain sentence. Shall we read from first? Will you come tomorrow? You will come tomorrow. Shall you take this? You shall take this. Would you like to go to the movie? You would like to go to the movie. So likewise, you will be given sentences in your test. You have to uh, rewrite the interrogative sentence into a certain sentence. Have you understood this? Shall we move on to the next one? Synonyms. Suit. A set of rule. Suit. A set of rule. Follower. Charter. Follower. Charter. Indaba. Meeting. In the bar, meeting. Chums, friends. Chums, friends. Strive, effort. Strive, effort. Fear, upright. Fear, upright. Sharplets, a garland. Sharplets, a garland. Dreary, unhappy. Dreary, unhappy. Maiden, a young girl. Maiden, a young girl. Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. Shall we from first? Suit, a set of room. Suit, a set of room. Palaver, charter. Palaver, charter. Indaba, meeting. Indaba, meeting. Shams, Friends, chums, friends, strive, effort, strive, effort, fear, upright, fear, upright, chaplets, a garland, chaplets, a garland, dreary, unhappy, dreary, unhappy, maiden, a young girl, maiden, a young girl, Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. Tamaris, a kind of desert plant. So from this, you will be asking uh, questions for your test. Okay? Next, antonyms. High, slow. High, slow. True, light. True, light. Narrow, white. Narrow, white. Friend, enemy. Friend, enemy. Appear, disappear. Appear, disappear. Seldom, often. Seldom, often. Kind, cruel. Kind, cruel. Love, hatred. 
love, hatred, new, old, new, old, happy, sad, happy, sad. We did it once again. High, slow, high, slow, truth, lie, truth, lie, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, friend, enemy, friend, enemy, appear, disappear, appear, disappear, seldom, often, seldom, often, kind, cruel, kind, cruel, love, hatred, love, hatred, new, old, new, old, happy, sad, happy, sad. So next one is the past tense. Go, went. The past tense of go is went. Tell, told, tell, told, get. God, get, God, think, thought, think, thought, wait, waiter, wait, waiter. So I have added ED at the last of the word. Leave, left, leave, left, come, came, come, came, find, found, find, found. Sleep, slept. Sleep, slept. We'll recall once again. Go, went. Go, went. Tell, told. Tell, told. Get, got. Get, got. Think, thought. Think, thought. Wait, waiter. Wait, waiter. Leave, left. Leave, left, come, came, come, came, find, found, find, found, sleep, slept, sleep, slept. Okay, next one is the reference to the context. Okay, reference to the context. So in this, a sentence will be given for you from the lesson or the poem. So what you have to do? You have to read the sentence carefully. Okay, you have to understand the sentence. So after understanding the sentence, you have to read the questions that has been given below. So first one, she isn't in her room. So she must have gone out. She isn't in her room. So she must have gone out. Can you be able to identify uh, which lesson is this? Yes. So, this sentence belongs to the lesson A Terrible Loss. So, I have given three questions for you. Who says this to who? Who is the speaker referring to? Did the listener agree with the speaker? So, after understanding these lines, you have to answer these questions. Okay, the first one is Who says this to who? So, uh, this sentence has been said to someone. So, you have to identify who is the speaker and who is the designer. Okay. Next one. Who is the speaker referring to? So, who is the speaker of this line? So, you have to write the answer for this. Did the listener agree with the speaker? Did the listener agree with the speaker? So, you have to write the answer. The second one. Of course, cried Dorothy. Why didn't I think of that before? Of course, cried Dorothy. Why didn't I think of that before? So, uh, I have already given answers for you. So, you have to read it and you have to write the answers for this. The question for the sentence. What does that refers to? What does that refers to? How would that help them? How would that help them? Did that help them? Okay, did that help them? So, in this uh, sentence, that that refers to, okay, did that refers to the magic picture. Do you remember that? Yes, that refers to the magic picture. And these uh, questions are also related to the magic picture. The third one. Into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country away. Into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country away. So, uh, this line has been uh, taken from the poem, Where the mind is without fear. Do you remember that poem? 
Yeah, good. So this sentence has been taken from where the mind is without fear. Who does the poet refer to as my father? Who does the poet refer to as my father? Summarize the poet's message. Summarize the poet's message. Why does the poet use the word away? So why the poet has been used the word away? Why does the poet use the word away? So you will be uh, asked questions from these three. Okay. So you have to write uh, one of the reference uh, context that has been asked from these three. Chapter from first, she is in, in her room. So she must have got out. Who says this to whom? Who is the speaker referring to? Did the listener agree with the speaker? After the second one, of course, write over the why did you type link of that before? So the uh, questions are what does that refer to? How would that help them? Did that help them? The third one is into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country away. Who does the speaker refer to as my father? Summarize the poet's message. Why does the poet use the word away? So you have to read the answers from the class work and you have to write it in your test. Okay. So the last one is the question and answer. Okay, question and answer. The first one. What do the merchants sell? What do the merchants sell? So uh, this uh, question has been taken from the poem in the verses of Hyderabad. Okay. What do the merchants sell? The second one. Who are addressed in the poem in the verses of Hyderabad? Who are addressed in the poem in the verses of Hyderabad? So you have to write who has been addressed in the poem verses of Hyderabad. The third one. How many girls from outside the palace live? Who are they? How many girls from outside the palace live? Who are they? So this has been taken from the close a terrible loss. Who discovered Princess Osma was lost? Who discovered Princess Osma was lost? And the last question is, who had been living in the palace for the longest time? Who had been living in the palace for the longest time? So from these five questions, I will give you only two questions. Okay, so you have to read these questions thoroughly. The first one is, what do the merchants sell? Who are addressed in the poem in the buses of Hyderabad? How many girls from outside the palace live? Who are they? So you have to mention the name of the girls. Who discovered Princess Osma was lost? Who had been living in the palace for the longest time? Okay students, we have discussed everything for your unit test to study at home and write your exams well. We will see, uh, see you in the next class. Thank you.